Hello and welcome to Ivory Blush Roses. We're still working on our challenge project. A few more steps to go. Today is the day we're going to work on our central bird motif. I can't wait to show you. For this project, we're going to use one of the fabrics that was provided in the challenge kit. This is the one that was required to be used in the project. It's this beautiful print. It had a floral and then there were also some birds in that pattern. I trimmed out one of the birds and it is going to become the central element of this challenge block and it's also going to use this doily um, to highlight that particular project. So let's get started. I cut a bird out of the fabric. I already added one thin layer of padding. I felt works great for something like this. And I've just sort of loosely basted it and stitched it on. It's kind of rough looking from the front. That's one of the things that I hope to fix today. So I wanted the bird to stand out in a little bit more relief. So I cut a second piece of that fine batting that I'm going to add behind it. And if you're wondering what this little V is, I am hoping to do some stitching and maybe add some beads right in here at the neck so that I can add some dimension to it. I also plan on embroidering the beak and adding a bead for the eye. When I cut this, you can see that it fits pretty perfectly right in there. And so now I'm going to add that to the back to give my bird some stability and since it's going to be kind of a separate element attached onto the block, I'm going to use a small piece of buckram. So I'm basically going to applique it down to the buckram. When I get down to the tail area, then I will add my tail pieces to that so that my bird then becomes a one complete bird. Once it's all together, I'll go back and I'll trim that buckram so it's not visible and it will also be easier to stitch down to this doily. So my supplies are pretty simple. I have my bird, the two pieces of lace that I dyed, the doily that's going to be the background. I have a little bit more felt padding if I decide I need a little bit more underneath the center of the bird. I have some more nylon beading thread. I have my scissors, my thimble, and I also have used a little bit of fray check to stabilize the ends of the lace where I have trimmed it away from other bits. I've actually already done that. I'm not going to need it again and the way the buckram is made I don't need to add more fray check to it. I'm going to set it aside. I also have my pair of scissors that I have marked as using for wired and ribbon. I don't want to use my good sewing scissors when I'm cutting heavier stuff like buckram. I don't want to take a chance of damaging them. You'll see that I've used an off-white thread and that's because I often find if you're working on fabric that's not pure white, it is easier to conceal it. Let's pin this bird down to the buckram so that I can start stitching. When I stitch this down, I'm going to pull it. I don't want any of that padding underneath to show. I actually think I need to trim this one edge back just a tiny amount and I'm not hardly taking anything off, just a tiny edge so you can see just those bits. And I think that worked better. I think that was just enough to, to bring it. I might have an edge here. We'll see as we go. I'm going to just pin him right down vertically. Just like everything else, I'm going to come up from the underside. So I'm just going to take little stitches and come up. I want them pretty close together. This is a small element and I think if they're too far away, it won't look as nice. can see how nicely that's fitting down there. That's exactly the look I was hoping for with this. So I'm going to just keep going. Now I could have done all of this right on the block itself, but with that doily there, it's going to be a little harder to get it to um, hold its shape. So I really wanted it to be a separate element that I could tack down on top of that doily and the stitched bird won't deform the doily. You can see, look how much better that's looking already. Those edges are just nice and neat. They've got, you can see the puff in them and that'll really be accented once we add the, the beads and stitching in here. 
the beak has no padding in it at all. So it's pretty flat and that's because my plan is to embroider right over the top of it. But I want it there as sort of a guide and it'll pad my stitches as well. So that So when I go down into the buckram, one of the things that I'm not sure is obvious is I actually am not going straight down on the edge. I'm actually angling so that I'm going back slightly underneath. And that's because once I go to trim this, I'm going to be trimming right up at that stitching and I want it to be very secure. And I don't want to trim my stitching if I can help it. So we have our bird appliqued down to the buckram and my next step is going to be to add the tail. The bird is actually going to be sitting on a branch. I have a piece of trim that I'm required to use in my project. So I want you to think about this bird sitting on this branch going this direction and it's going to be dotted with flowers and leaves. But so we're really seeing the bird from the front side with the branch in between. So if this bird is sitting on a branch here, where do we want this long tail feather to be? I think I like it coming out here and we'll embroider some little bird's feet over that once we get to that point in the process. The top one's easy to position, but I'm gonna remove this one and we're gonna tack this one down first. I'm gonna grab my pin once again, just because now that I know where I want it, I don't want it to move. And I don't have a lot of space to tack it down. I'm just gonna be tacking right along that base where that tail of the fabric bird was. So once again, I'm gonna keep using my off-white thread and I'm going to come up right in that tail area and I'm catching the blue tail in it. Now this piece is going to be underneath so you're not going to see it from the outside. So if this off-white thread shows a little bit, that's just fine. Aren't we looking so pretty? Truthfully, if it was up to me, I would just have put this piece on but because I'm required to use each of the elements that was provided in the kit, this was one piece of lace and this was a separate one and I'm required to use that. It fits nice over the lower tail, giving it some added dimension. We're gonna be stitching primarily in this little area because I'm gonna be trimming that buckram away. I want to stay within the fabric area of that tail. So now I want to hide my stitches in, in these areas here. So they'll be less visible that way, even though it's still that off-white thread. I'm going to do a couple in there. I'm going to add a couple here in the vein of this leaf. It'll give some dimension. I think we're going to, to leave a little bit bigger piece of buckram. It'll make it easier for stitching down. and and it'll help give that tail some stability. And this one, I'm going to actually go with the direction of the threads. That's another good way of concealing. And then on the edge of the feather, I'm going to go across. Again, I want that nice and secure. And I'm going to do that right along the edge of each one of those feather pieces. It's feeling pretty solid to me. I love the way the feathers are curling up just a little bit. There, I think we have it. I, eventually here I'm going to trim this, but before I trim it, I really need to embroider the beak on this bird. So to embroider the beak on this, at first I thought I was going to use the variegated DMC thread that was provided in the kit, but it seems just a little too bright. I don't really want that. What I do like is this is the thread that I used when I was doing the embroidery on 
the pink blocks and then this beak area is very tiny if I put a big knot there it's going to be a little harder to make it work so I'm going to bury the knot back here in that head region and we're going to just kind of run through that buckram I'm going to bring it straight up and I'm going to come straight back and the stitch that I'm going to use on this is a fishbone what we're going to do is we're going to come right down here to where I brought that other stitch and now I'm going to come up on the bottom side of that beak and we're going to come up to the bottom of that stitch we just put in so now I'm back on the other side cross over just slightly I've made my knot, threaded my thread through so it doesn't end right up here in that busy area. So there we have our bird. It's got a lovely embroidered beak that matches what was already there. We've added the tail, which all looks very nice. So now we're going to trim. I'm going to use my designated wire scissors, and I'm going to do this really carefully and probably in sections and I'm going to do this all from the back side. I'm going to actually start back down here in this tail area and I do not want to trim my stitching. So I'm going to leave just a little border. We'll get the bulk of it off. So where I trim this behind this tail is about where it's going to stay in that region because you're not going to see that but where I need to trim it right up next to the bird is right in here and now I'm going to do the rest of this trimming from the front side I have this set of scissors and actually I think they are sharper than the other ones so I'll continue trimming up this little edge here trying to get as close as I can but without trimming my stitching Some of this I'm going to do from the back just so I can see a little easier what I'm doing. This is really the most time consuming part of this whole thing, trying to trim without damaging the stitches. I actually need to get the magnifying glass out for trimming this bit up and making sure that it all looks nice and neat. So now I'm using an ot light with a magnifier in it, and it just helps me see a little bit more clearly what exactly is taking place. Let's see the little green scissors. Since I'm not trimming anything heavy, I'm just trimming. There we go. That looks better. That's much neater. We'll turn this off. And move it out of the way so I don't use that all the time but it's sure helpful when you want to see some particular detail that otherwise you can't see very clearly so the next thing to do on my bird is to add some beads to accent the neckline so originally when I chose beads these turquoise beads over here on the right were the ones I was thinking about and sometimes a good way is I just take a pinch of beads and put it on a project I actually like those really well. I think they're, they show it up nicely. And if you tip the bead on the side, you can get an idea how they would be. But these beads are a little bit tiny and I'm not sure that they give the effect that I'm after. The one I found in my stash of stuff that I like the best are these transparent aqua beads. And I think they actually give that little bit of life. So I'm going to, everywhere there's a brown dot here, I'm going to stitch down those beads. And I think that's gonna be just that bit of life that this little bird needs. Now we're ready to do some beading. I gathered my beads, got the beading mat, and it's just a small piece of velour that works great. The beads tend to stick to it, they don't roll all over, and then it makes it really easy to gather them up and put them back in the container when I'm done. So when I'm sewing on transparent beads like this, the color of the thread makes a difference. 
If I had used a solid bead, I would have continued to use the off-white thread that I had been working with. It would have worked just fine. But let me just even thread one bead onto this white thread and you'll be able to see how even on the white thread, um, sometimes you can sort of get a glimpse of that thread. When I use the blue thread, it just helps to intensify that color. So they both would have worked, but I do like the blue thread through it better. It makes the blue just a hair darker so the bead will show up a little bit more. I do like to use a doubled thread. It gives you more security. Should one strand break for some reason, you still have the second strand providing insurance that everything will stay in place. I stitched each bead on individually using a little back stitch with that doubled nylon thread. It worked really well and I did add an extra bead at the base of the triangle. In an upcoming episode, I will show you how we will attach the bird and embellish the rest of this particular block to finish it off. Thank you for watching today's episode of Ivory Blush Roses Crazy Quilting and Beyond. I hope you enjoyed watching this bird motif come together. It was so much fun and I'm so pleased with how it turned out. Don't forget to subscribe, click on the bell to be notified of new episodes, leave me a thumbs up, and I'd love to hear what you think of our little bird motif. Thank you so much for watching. Happy stitching. Let's go make something beautiful.